I was asked, this was an interview where I was the interview subject, um, and he asked about AI. And I said, well, if you really understand education, it's irrelevant. Right. <laughs> exactly. You know? Excellent. It, yes. It's, it's how, it, his point actually was, you know, the follow-up point that he made when I said that was like, yeah, but I see it, you know, like, you're, they're writing the essays. And it's like, yeah, the, the faux achievement, the faking it is going right. to get worse. Yeah. But the true education, the truly like getting in touch with reality of understanding what your place in the world and, and really developing the relationships to each other, the relationships to subjects, the mm -hmm. relationship to larger communities. AI is irrelevant. Yeah. AI just isn't doesn't have anything to offer there. And so, you know, it, the the real juice, the real meat, the real magic is is exactly you know what your mom said it's like the 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 child is the curriculum yeah and in in a you could extend that and say the family is the curriculum yes this is the agentic schools podcast where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills i'm your host Donberg. All right, welcome. Uh, we are here with Chandra Montre <laughs> sorry, Chandra Montgomery Nicole um, and of Clan Lara. And and before we get into sort of the mundane details, let's start off. Just tell me a story or two about a student or families that just found the magic of Clan Lara, just found what was what made it work for them. Oh, wow. I think I have a great story. And that was, um, oh, at least a decade ago, we were doing a little um, video recording, kind of when things were new. And, and uh, mm. you know, one of the, a student wanted to do uh, kind of a marketing piece. I would have called it a marketing piece, which was great, but about people's experience. And so, uh, we asked a family that both parents and two children what, uh, for this recording, what uh, Clonlara had given them. And they all said, Clonlara gave me my freedom. And mm. I remember watching them record this and I kept thinking, no, we didn't give you your freedom. You, <laughs> you have your freedom. We didn't give it to you. Um, so when it got to the last uh, daughter who I you know I kind of said this I can't believe they're just you know sort of giving away their own agency here <laughs> to us right and right. she said Clon Lara made us realize that we had our freedom because we start with choice um, I like I like your use of the word uh, agentic or, or agency mm -hmm. because that that seems to be um, it's a new lingo for for an old right. an old process at least an old process for schools like ours um, and choice, we always used to say choice is our middle name, but it was really kind of our first name. And it, it's the first mm. thing we do when a, when a parent or a student comes to us, you know, is we say, what is it you're, what is it you're choosing here at Clon Lara? And, and how can we help you um, on your mm. learning process? And so uh, topic is, is one of the first things they choose. Um, but there's many more, many more examples of how they can choose to go outside. A young child can say, I'm not doing right. this. I don't want to do the reading. And they can run out the door and, and, and play outside in the view of our windows. I mean, even our building was built so that we can see the kids when, mm. from the classroom when they're not in the classroom. Um, nice, there's just nice. so many little stories like that. I can go on and on and on. <laughs> right, right. So, so, um, so to orient, now that we have a nice story to, to anchor ourselves, um, so, so give a little bit of sort of, it's a storied school in that it's been around a while. Yeah. Uh, so, so go ahead and give a little bit of, of uh, kind of where it started um, and, and how it has evolved to what it is today. All right. Well, I'm a, I think I'm a really good person to tell that story because I was there on day one when my mother started the school. Um, I like to say I was the first student because uh, I was the oldest one, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but my brother was there too, so you know we all kind of showed up uh. at the same time, um, and we had a lot of that. We I was three years old, so you know we were basically just doing a lot of running around. And then uh, what my mother had set up was 
exposure. There, you know, there was a little mm. uh, cooking center or a little science center, science for three year olds, you know. Um, and and if we if we expose ourselves to that and engaged in it, uh, great. And if we just sort of ran outside and learned, about, you know, all about the the botany on the trees, um, mm. you know, that that was great too. Um, we progressed, Clamara progressed, that was 1967, and we progressed adding a grade or an age every year. Um, and mm. so the um, sort of content and exposure to, to information and, and experiences uh, got more sophisticated for you know, the older we got, but it was still very much a place of choice. And we, we, mm. um, we had some classes, we had teachers that would come in and they only had a certain amount of time every day, so they couldn't stay with us all day while we ran outside. Um, right. And so maybe they were doing a project with us uh, and, and we could still choose to be there for that project or, or um, you know, do our own thing. And um, that carried on, you know, until mm -hmm. we added a high school. Again, things get a little more sophisticated when you have this expectation that you're going to be earning a high school diploma and, you know, wherever yeah. you go from here may want to see that, may want to see that you earned credits or what, what did you do. And so we developed mm -hmm. a whole transcript and graduation requirements. Um, and in a way, those processes were a bridge between the worlds, the world of the sort of unschooling student, if you will, that mm. was really popular word for our um, homeschooling um, enrollments. Um, mm. But then the campus mm. enrollments, um, we never really called it unschooling. I think we called it free school for a while and right. um, democratic schooling. And now it's agentic yeah. schooling, right? So, so there's always something new, uh, a new lingo, but for the same process that is the choice, the students, the students' decision in what is going to happen at this moment is what we're looking for, you know, we're, and we're looking. Mm -hmm. um, then in 19, no, it wasn't 19, it was already 2005 is when I actually stepped mm. in no longer as, as a student and then a parent of students there, uh, but as the executive director when my mother um, oh. retired. In fact, we don't like to say the R word. She transitioned right. <laughs> out as director and was still involved yep. and still, you know, is available on occasion if, if we um, want to contact her to uh, train some teachers or give, you know, just share a story or two. She's, she's still around. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I took it on and I, I think what I focused on is if we're going to, you know, to, at that point, I think we were 38 years old and, and the school's now 55. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so we needed to ensure our own sustainability. And, and one of the things that mm. we needed to do, I think, was um, try to resonate with the mainstream. Um, uh. Because in, in my experience, having gone to Clonmara uh, from the time I was three until I was 11, and then going to public mm. school, private schools, big universities, small universities. I had a lot of different educational experiences. And I have to say I enjoyed them all. I really mm, liked learning. And I, th I think that's something Clonara gave me early, and then they couldn't beat it out of me later. But <laughs> um, right, right, right. But, um, but what I thought is the beauty of this is not for the few who find us. It's really mm. that education needs to be this way. And I thought the only mm -hmm. way we're gonna get Clamara to, to be recognized is that is if we can talk to the mainstream um, and sort mm -hmm. of become this bridge between the mainstream. So we kind of stopped trying to identify ourselves as something different and just called ourselves a school and tried to find a way, how do we define what we're doing to people who you know, aren't going to read a, a huge tome on that. And, right, right. and we yeah. did, we created a, a, a circle, full circle learning, and we put in these different components mm. um, and, you know, backed that up with, with a lot of the um, psychology, the uh, right. positive psychology. And, and I know I saw you at one of the conferences out west um, for the yep, self-determination yep. uh, theory. I love yep. that. You know, I love that stuff. Exactly, so, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I tried to get all of that in there in a way that that 
it, it looks like branding. It's not meant to be branding in a, <laughs> in a marketing sense, but it is meant to talk to the average person who doesn't know they're looking for a different school, but knows they want something yeah. for, you know, better or different for their child. Yeah, that is really important. And I, and I think how people understand, because we're familiar with it, um, is that Claude and Lara, as you've mentioned, you've alluded to the fact that it has a, a physical location, it yeah. has a campus, but it also has, and it's, it's a larger component in a sense in terms of how you're serving globally, uh, is this kind of uh, online, well, describe how it works. It's not truly online, not what we think of today. It's not what we think of as online, exactly. So we started off and we called it the home-based education program. And that was students who were um, looking for a Clonara education, but doing that at home. And mm -hmm. at the time when that started in the, it, well, really in 1979 and through the 80s, um, was just riding the wave of this homeschooling movement. Uh, right, and the homeschooling right. movement has a lot of different kinds of people. It's not just unschoolers. Uh, it's not just eclectic schoolers. It has everything right. from those approaches to absolute school at home. I mean, we had people yeah. enroll with us back in the back in the eighties who called and said, "I just have one question: Do do I let them chew gum while they're while they're <laughs> learning?" You know, and I think my answer this was a question that came to me actually. And I think my answer was, "Well, if 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 you're not worried about having to clean it up off the carpet, I don't see why not." You know, I mean. <laughs> Right. <laughs> and when do they go to the bathroom? So people were trying to recreate school at home. And one of our yeah. one of our missions was to say that's, you know, if that's what makes you comfortable and that's what allowed you to make the decision to homeschool, great. But you're going right. to find out real quickly that you don't need all of those trappings. And we want to help you find mm -hmm. this richness. And the richness you'll find is through that idea of agency, through that idea of yeah. why don't we incorporate what the kids should know into mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. they want to know. Okay, so they right. want to know more about photography and how can you teach them chemistry or physics or you know geometry through that interest. Now, I don't think you can take you know simple photography and teach an entire you know, geom geometry course that will be accepted as a college right. level course, but you yeah, can yeah. get that interest. Here's the hook. Here's the hook that um, rule of thirds and where does that come from and why is that important? And, you know, and then mm -hmm. the other pieces of geometry start to fit in around that. And you can maybe look at a textbook right. or look at an online class and say, oh, now that it now that it has relevance right. to me, <laughs> I'm interested in doing that. And um, so, so it grew as just this course, not correspondence, because we are not doing the instruction and we are not correcting right. what's done. We are monitoring what is being done and, and, you know, tweaking. Yeah, we think that's absolutely fabulous. Or you, you may want to look at uh, a little more depth. If you want to call that a high school credit, mm. we need a little more depth in, in what you're doing. Um, so, so would you say you're kind of... Um doing a little bit of quality control yes but also are you sort of providing a, a framework for documentation such that it becomes very much accreditable so. thing yeah very much so we have full accreditation and we you know we have the whole process of how you start at the beginning of the year or semester and and tell us what you're what you're planning to do what you want to do and then we monitor throughout, you know, we monitor. We have a communication with you throughout the year that says, are you right, on right. track? Or if you have fallen off track, why? It's, it's, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we're not going to punish you if you made a whole plan at the beginning of the semester. And by the time you get eight weeks in, you're going, it didn't work. <laughs> we're going to say, what right, did work? Right. What did work? How yeah. can we help you? How can we help you recover maybe what you started? Or how can we help you plan something totally different? Okay, you learned that an online course for physics was so boring that you've got to find something mm. different. Let us, let us help you find something different. So we actually do have our own online courses. You can enroll and, mm. and it will be totally traditional and our teachers will grade you. Um, mm. But very few of our enrollments actually enroll in that. It's kind of like this additional service for that one class that you know, the, right, right. that the family's just like, we can't do this on our own. 
Um, yeah, yeah. And for the most part, what we do is we sit down, our advisors sit down with families at the beginning of the year and say, you know, what is your plan? Here's how that, if, mm-hmm. if you're in high school, here's how that will get you f- closer to, you know, that, that diploma document that you may value. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and here's, here's things you might want to think of. Here's things you might want to put off. Here's approaches that other students have used to do a very creative uh, learning session. And, and here's some traditional mm-hmm. ones that you may want to consider. Um, nice. And so a lot of that is, is coaching or advising on our part. And then the students go out and learn it. Or, the, you know, they might hire a tutor. They might join a homeschool co-op right, class. Right. It may not be a totally and completely self-designed you know, course where the student is just off on their own without mentors or whatever. Um, but that's possible too. So we have all these different right, ways that right. these kids can be learning. Typically the younger kids, the K to eight kids are mm-hmm. working with their parents. A parent is home with them, um, probably learning as much or more, you know, on the <laughs> way. That's what most parents say. I can't believe how much I learned when I decided to teach my kids, yep. you know, at home. <laughs> um, but always we are trying to encourage their choice and their um, right. looking to the student to be the curriculum, really. That was one, right, of, right. one of my mother's, you know, f- famous quotes was the student is the curriculum. Mm-hmm. Nice, nice. Yeah, so that, that's really interesting because it, 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 uh, you know, you're you're in a unique space. Uh, you, you're because of your history is that you you came through. You were pre-internet, and and yeah. that's amazing. Is like you were doing stuff and facilitating homeschooling um, from the beginning in a in a very real sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and and you've you've made that transition to to and through all of this technological development. And this is something that that was really interesting in, in one of the other conversations I was having, is that there's a. I was asked. This was an interview where I was the interview subject, um, and he asked about AI, and I said, "Well, if you really understand education, it's irrelevant." Right. <laughs> exactly. You know. Excellent. It, yes. It's it's how it, his point actually was. You know, the follow up point that he made when I said that was like. Yeah, but I see it, you know, like you're they're writing the essays and it's like, yeah, the the faux achievement, the faking it is going right. to get worse. Yeah. But the true education, the truly like getting in touch with reality of understanding what your place in the world and and really developing the relationships to each other, the relationships to subjects, the mm-hmm. relationship to larger communities. AI is irrelevant. AI right. just isn't doesn't have anything to offer there. And so you know it, the the real juice, the real meat, the real magic is is exactly you know what your mom said. It's like the 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 child is the curriculum. Yeah. And in in a you could extend that and say the family is the curriculum. Yes. Um, because as you pointed out, the, the the parents are on the journey too. As soon as they make that decision, as soon as they really engage with their child, their community. Then the one they realize like like the fantastic image of like well I'm gonna do school at home, which, which I've literally seen the videos online of like you know mom setting it up desks in the kitchen yeah. you know, and 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 great you know if that's what's working for you but they've plugged into oh and as you've pointed out uh, the most common experience is oh I don't need that. And, and one of the other thing I flashed on uh, as you were talking was uh, one of the earliest kind of communities I plugged into was Raymond and Dorothy Moore's yeah. uh, work. Um, and it was so interesting because, you know, they have a very conservative Christian context out of which they were working. And, and, and yet they were, had come from the mainstream. Like he actually worked for the Department of Education the yeah. Federal Department of Education for a while and did all this research. And, and they had a whole book. I'm try, I can't remember what the name of it was, but basically they were making the point that if you have to do school, later is better. Yeah. And, it, it, you know, it's, it points to exactly what you were saying is like, well, you had this interesting education before that. And so when you arrived there, you were able to say, oh, okay, 
You know, yeah. <laughs> I'm here. I'm going to take advantage. And and it could be this enjoyable thing because you understood yourself as a learner yeah. in a way that, like, I went through public schools from the beginning. My mom, uh, uh, later on, after I started studying homeschooling, things like that, I asked her, you know, why didn't you homeschool us? And she was like, never occurred to me. <laughs> exactly. Thing. Exactly. And so, and so for her, she literally said it was free babysitting. Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay. And, and she also followed up because we actually have teachers in our family going back generations. Okay. And she said, but I never expected you to get an education at school. School was just free babysitting. It was our responsibility. <laughs> I take care of everything you needed to know. You just want to exactly. just park you over there for a while. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and when we would go on vacations, you know, we would go, get in the car and travel, and we would go to museums. Like, we would be on the road. And it's like, oh, look, there's a thing. Let's go see it. There's a, there's a plaque. Let's go see what it says. And, and so I, I mentioned this in a prior episode. Like, just recently, it's like, you know, I, we did museums, and they were totally fun. Yeah. You know, the way we did that. And then when I did museum field trips in school, it was boring. And yeah. it's like, that's a disconnect for sure. Because yeah. everybody's <laughs> glad um, to get out of the classroom and you know, flex their muscles, social muscles. Look, I can run faster right, right. than you. Look, I can make funnier faces at the art or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, 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 everything, a lot of stuff is going on, but because of the kind of, you could, in a sense, say there's a sort of pressure that builds up in the in that social context, and then and then you give them a little freedom, and they're like, right, you know, that, that yeah. has to has to sort of you know have a release, and so, mm -hmm. uh, well, it's like uh, you know Grace Llewellyn's book, uh, Teenage Liberation Handbook, right. you know, is that she said you know you have to give kids this opportunity to decompress if they've yeah. been in that kind of pressure cooker. Yeah. And 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 I think she was saying you know it may take a month, it may take six months, it may take a year. But you, 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 and, 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 and the parents keep coming back and saying, this is what we find, uh, is, is you, they, they kind of struggle with the structuring thing, but what they're bumping up against is the kid's own resistance to just being right. externally structured, which gets to the agency is like, eventually what they often find is like, well, once, once you get to that point of like conflict, either they give up and send them back to school. That's an outcome that happens. Right. But the ones who stick with it enough break through and discover something else. And they discover that agency piece. Um, they don't call it that. <laughs> no. <laughs> but but, no. Uh, but that's, that's what they're really like, oh, like the kid has interests and I can tailor it. Or I can, I can you know, uh, if, if they're committed to the math, they can find ways to... One, you can just be efficient with it and say, yeah, okay, for the next half hour, do your math. Right. And, and then you're done for the day, you know? Like, yeah. Like, yeah, the structure doesn't have to be onerous, which is something that school creates. Right. Is the onerousness of it. Um, so, so, yeah, yeah. It's, so, so, um, so, so give it, give, let, let's uh, give people a sense, like, like you're in uh, Michigan, yes. right? Yes. Yeah, so uh, and so the campus is in Ann Arbor? The campus so. is in Ann Arbor, yeah, and that's the only okay. one right now, but we, we're this close to opening a brand Ooh. new campus in Portugal, actually. And wow, we cool. just ran into, we, ha we actually have a little program, unofficial school program going on over there, and we were supposed to move into the building and be an official school program, and then there were all sorts of building issues, of course, mm. and, and that, so we did, it doesn't look like we're going to open up in September, but probably by second semester we'll have our second uh campus sweet really sweet. exciting yeah but the the campus in ann arbor has been on the same location since october 3rd 1967. Uh, mm. so you know it, it's it's endured nice nice now um let, let's let's so one of the things that is my way of thinking through what's really going on in schools of different models is what I, you know, power structure is that right. there is a way that conflict happens and conflict gets resolved and that decisions are made. Now, from the homeschooling side, one of the things I like to point out is that you cannot get a more democratic or flat power structure than the family directly because the children are directly dealing with the decision makers if the decision makers right. don't 
pass that straight line access. <laughs> right, it's direct. And, and I point out that the power structures in American schooling, historically, pre-World War II, were not much more than that. Right. Except in the urban areas. But in, in most areas, schools were small, districts were small. Like, they could, because there was, particularly at younger ages, but, but you know, there, the power structure just wasn't that big. Bureaucracy hadn't taken over yet. In, 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 you know, except for the big urban areas. Yeah. And so, and so, but homeschooling, ultimate flattening of the power structure. And and most democratic schools operate in a similar way. So to describe, you said you've you know free school democratic school. You've gone through the I have the, the, gone the, through the, the whole terminology. Way. Yeah. Um, so so describe how it is now. Like how how what does it look like there? When how does conflict get resolved? How do decisions get made? So we're really small, um, and and COVID did impact our enrollment. But oh, um, yeah. yeah, typically I'd say we're forty five students, and that's K to twelve. Um, mm -hmm. I'd love to see us grow, don't get me wrong, but again, we were getting this momentum um, before COVID and, and you know, that, that crashed and burned. And I, I actually think we're around 22 students right now, but I'm not mm -hmm. sure what we'll open with in, in September. And I know it's, uh, it's growing and we've hired more teachers. Right um, so we've mm -hmm. been really small. When we opened, we were 11 students. Okay, so we're talking a micro well, yeah. <laughs> school, and we have been as big as as I think 65 students in the same okay. in the same location. And um, th that's another whole discussion about how we could how we could better uh, my, you know better make that growth because I would like to see schools exactly. like ours you know thriving uh, instead of you mm -hmm. know struggling mm -hmm. to to you know just keep those enrollments. Um, again, yep. different different story. What it looks like now, we have a large building that was built specifically to be Clamara School. And oh, wow. um, yep, we have three major areas of that. And so we, we do divide the kids up between sort of um, elementary, which is youngers and older youngers. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then yep. we have middles and then we have olders. Mm -hmm. Um, and then when they're, they bridge them, they, you get yittles and you get molders and <laughs> <laughs> they have all their right, fun. Right. They have all their fun with that. Um, but for the most part, we have areas, you know, physical areas where they're separated and we will have, um, at least one full-time teacher with each group, um, with each age group. And then, um, a floater teacher that, you know, mm. uh, is available for, for all the classes or to help organize if, if they all go together on a field trip or, you know, wherever mm -hmm. a need might be. And then we'll have um, teachers, uh, an art teacher comes in, you know, a couple, three times a week. Uh, maybe a foreign language teacher comes in, you know. Um, maybe if, if the full-time teachers are, are lacking, uh, that I... Mm, X the lacking part <laughs> are, you know, spend a lot more time on English than they do on math. We might get a, a right. you know, an adjunct teacher to come in and teach math. Um, mm -hmm. And then so we have times. We actually divide the day. They're not exactly classes, um, but there are some class times where everybody in the whole building is really supposed to be working on some language arts. And there might be mm. stop, drop, and read, you know, and at that time, 10, mm. 20 every morning or whatever, there's just whatever you're doing, whether you're actually attending a class or, um, you know, ran out to play or whatever, we encourage, you know, full participation mm. in stop, drop, and read. So we have these sort of built-in schedule things that add some consistency without being mandated structure without being okay. we are all going to read exactly the same thing at exactly the same time and then we're going to ask you what you read and grade you on how well you <laughs> right. absorb that it's if you pick up a comic book if you pick up a romance novel if you pick up you know something you've read 19 times before uh, or something brand new that that you need help with because it's maybe a little over your head mm. all of that is is a possibility in that time when they do nice. a class, let's, you know, because a high school student, in order to get a diploma from us, must take some American government. Um, but it's not this textbook. It's not this one book that we throw at you and say, mm. you know, again, if you, if you know everything in this book, then you know American history. If, if your, you know, family does Civil War reenactments and you want to sort of use that as the central point and how did we get 
here from there or how did we ever end up there in the first place or what <laughs> what could happen now what would it look like if if this happened now that's totally acceptable um Mm-hmm. And that's the self-motivated student. And not everybody is self-motivated right. all the time. And I can say that for myself right. at, at my age now, you know, like I sometimes I just don't want to do it. And so there will be teachers that say, Did, would you consider looking at this? Would you consider doing that? Mm-hmm. And if, if you're really doing absolutely nothing, I hate this and I don't want to do it. Well, we'll just keep that spot open on your transcript until you complete it, you know. Um, right. <laughs> but there will be structured time uh you know, in the day for you to be able to do that. Um, There's structured time for your independent study, too. So we don't just say, Mm -hmm. well, we have this whole day and we do, you know, what we what we do here. And then if you want to do independent study or you want to learn something of your own choice, you've got to go home and do that. Uh, We really try to keep sort of the school, you know, everything that we can help you with, everything that we require. um, We we put that in the school day uh, for the kids. But decision making and conflict, um, you know, I think I kind of described what a conflict between sort of the teacher and the student in terms of what's getting done, how that might be resolved. It might be resolved by the teacher saying, this is your choice. I don't care if you're in high school until you're 50, you know, (laughs) if you don't finish that credit, you're not getting the credit. Um, And so it's on you. Um, But other a lot of times the conflicts are between the kids. So and so mm-hmm, hurt my right, feelings. Exactly. So and so took my thing. So and so um, always wants to do that, and I don't want to do it. And he's taking all the attention and you know running the school day in a way that I don't like. So we have a we have a meeting. We have a morning meeting. Mm-hmm. It's like fifteen minutes, and they and they talk about what they're going to do during the day. Um, a different student is the um, supervisor of the meeting. What's that word? And not administrator. There's a word that, that uh, chair, like the chair of the of the meeting, and that revolves. And so, I mean, sometimes it mm-hmm. can be a kindergarten student is the chair for that day, and sometimes it's a high school student. And always mm-hmm. somebody who's who's done it before mentors the person of the day. You know, um, nice, nice. and so they can bring their grievances to that. If it's going to take more than fifteen minutes, then there might be an additional time during the day where they're just going to to work this out together. And the teachers are going to give, you know, the input, uh, but not necessarily mm-hmm. be the decision makers for how is this conflict settled. Most mm-hmm. of the con- most conflict is an emotional issue, you know. Right. I, you know, if it's just I don't want to do it, and that's so I'm going to make trouble for others, um, or so I, I've been hurt, I've, I've been wronged, mm-hmm. I'm indignant, I, you know, or we are all indignant on behalf of you because that guy keeps doing that um and that's i since the very beginning of Quamara school i think uh, um, most kids would tell you we spent more time in meetings you know getting these things sorted out um and i think what my mother would say is that's where the learning that's where the learning comes from because right. it really doesn't take a long time to learn two plus two equals four you know right or right. or you know, the Pythagorean theorem, if it's relevant. And if, if right. your mind is open to learning that and you don't have conflict and you don't have stress, then okay, let's just do it. And we right. see that a lot in, in, the, in the at home, which we now call off-campus students. We okay. can see kids that, that really haven't done anything structured, um, but all of a sudden, and they're, and they're 13, they're 14 years old, and they have this real unschooling thing, there's nothing on their transcript. They're not, you know, they're not uneducated, but they're undocumented, okay? Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. And, and then they want something. All of a sudden, they, you know, they got really into their violin playing, and now a conservatory mm. wants them to attend, but they can't attend without a high school diploma. They'll finish every single credit in, in two right. years, eight, sometimes 18 months. They'll do an entire yeah. high school curriculum because all of a sudden they're ultra motivated. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so where they got that maturity to be able to do that, though, is by solving their own problems, by understanding right. that they do have agency. And that's both, you know, sort of this this 
choice. I've talked a lot about choice and what you want to learn, but also this choice and mm -hmm. how am I engaging socially in this environment of school? And again, whether that's with my siblings or whether that's with my teacher or my mother um, or the administration of the building, you know, the, right, you know, right. um, all of that comes from, from conflict resolution and from, from what originally we called play. And, and I think like Piaget right. and they, they said play. And what kids are doing on the playground is not learning to play baseball or basketball or, or jacks. They're learning right, how right. to interact with each other while they play these games. Um, and my mother was a, a huge um, poo-pooer of sort of adult rules imposed on children's games. Because as soon as you take out that kids trying to make their own rules, you've taken mm -hmm. away the conflict resolution that is absolutely essential to mm. being in relationship with other people. Right, right. And, and so there's a lot of that goes on. We allow for it in meetings. We allow for it with students. And, and you know, we don't just grab a, two kids out that are maybe, we don't see a lot of fights, but, you know, right, right. <laughs> in, in conflict. And we don't send them off to the principal and say, somebody else will solve your problem or we'll just call your mother, you know. Right, uh, right, right. <laughs> All right. So, so, so yeah, so, so, um, conflict resolution now, um, when you're, when you've had students who are having a challenging conflict and, and you're, you know, you have the meeting structure, um, and, 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 and they spend a lot of time doing a meeting and then, and then having that, that's, you know, a lot of learning happens there. One of the things that, uh, I found really interesting was um, so I, I taught psychology for a year at the Village Free School, and uh, one of my students uh, went on to study psychology. Interesting in college. So, nice. uh, but he came back and he visited with me, and we were having a great conversation. And one of the things that he was down in, you know, kind of about about the school was, oh man, it seems so dysfunctional, and and it was interesting because then I was like, hmm, really. And, and I said, how many, you know, like you had a hard time making decisions? Yeah, okay. Um, and I said, well, well, how, how often was the budget a problem? The budget? We didn't consider the budget. <laughs> oh, did I you have a problem hiring people? No, no. So, so what I did was I reframed his understanding of what was going on. And now how I understand it is like what you were doing was going through the process of enabling people who don't know how to make decisions to go through the hard part of learning, which is right. to have the conflict, to do it poorly, to do it in a way that's not effective. Yeah. And then because he's in it all the time, he can see those strategies aren't effective. And so, so he went, oh, <laughs> you know, like, Oh, okay. Well, that's you know, a and huge, start to understand it differently. That's a huge component of uh, of how I felt about Clamara and 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 alternative schooling or whatever you want, democratic schooling or whatever right. for for <laughs> so long is um, I'm not sure the students or the parents understood right. on a meta level, you know, so that that sort of meta understanding of of what's going on. Because mm -hmm. there was, this is, oh, this has to be 15 years ago. There was a, um, a, a little video done of a, of a free school that had operated, I think, in the early 70s in Toronto. And mm -hmm. I do not remember mm -hmm. the name, but you may have come across this video. And, you know, and they interviewed, they sort of had a little reunion and then tried to find all of the students. And all of the uh -huh. students might have been 10, you know, that they, that they were right, able right. to find. And they asked all these students you know, about their experience at the school. And they, and they had been, you know, young. They had been elementary right. age, maybe up to middle school, you know, maybe up to 11 years old when they were at the school back in the day. And now, and, and they were, you know, they, they had to be 30 years older at the time. So they're interviewing right. them about this couple of years. And they said, you know, 
did you like the school or what do you remember? Oh, they all had wonderful, wonderful memories of this, just the happiness that surrounded them at this, at this place. Um, but they all sort of said, then we went to real school. Then we went, mm -hmm. you know, we left that place, it closed, whatever. Um, and, and we went on and we, we learned real stuff or I don't, you know, I was really happy, but I don't know what I learned. And I thought, right. nobody, nobody told you or probably your parents that what you're right. learning here is these really key issues, how to be happy, how to recognize happiness, right. what to do with it, how to, how to share it with others and how to get back to it when you're in conflict about it. Mm -hmm. All of that sort of mm -hmm. social, emotional learning. And, and I guarantee you, they learned some academic um, stuff too, but maybe nobody did write that down because that was, you know, right, the 60s right. and 70s, <laughs> nobody was, you know, that, that stuff will take care of itself. And every single one right. of them could read and write and articulate, you know, and probably had job. Nobody complained, well, I, you know, I'm 40 years old and I don't have a job because I went to that school for a couple of years, you know. So right. it's not as if they didn't learn anything, but it's taking that experience. And when you see what's happening in the regular system, that they are just shoving this content into these kids' heads over and over and over again. That's learning. That's learning. Right, and I didn't right. learn anything. And I think we schools sort of failed at that, those of us that were around in the 70s, 80s, and maybe even the mm -hmm. 90s. And, and that is another thing that I tried to do with Clon Lara is set up this structure that is really identifying on a regular basis. Here's what you learned. You did not mm -hmm. necessarily, um, you know, learn about the Krebs system in biology, but what you did right. learn was how to find a mentor in biology because you didn't mm -hmm. learn the Krebs cycle because nobody was encouraging you or showing you the way or, or suggesting different ways because you learn differently. Um, so, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we taught you that a mentor is an important component of learning. And you can apply that right. to your biology class. You can apply that to later in life when you need to learn a new skill at work. You can apply that to, um, you know, when you need a life coach or a therapist. <laughs> you right, know? right, so, right. So we, that's what, what we're trying to do now is put this meta relevance in there so that right. people can't say, right. I didn't learn anything. Well, no, we didn't cover you know, page 295 of the standard textbook <laughs> in that class today. And, you know, you may or may not know that, you know, nutrition is vitamins are nutrition. Um, right, right. But but we hope we taught you if you were listening, we taught you how to find that kind of information, whether you use AI or, <laughs> or right, right, you know, right. uh, or Wikipedia or a book, you know, for crying out right. loud. Or, so. Yeah. And that, that's that's where. Um, so coming from the psychology and the study that's going on um, and trying to what so, so I see that there's it's not a general conversation uh, about how these kinds of schools really land. Um, uh, I, I, you know, I'm encouraged that you're trying, you know, you're, you're, yeah. you're making the effort to really say, here's here's how we articulate what we're actually what kids are getting from this. Um, but I, I'm also so I, and I want that conversation to be happening as part of what this com podcast is about is to say agency needs to be part of that conversation. And it does look different. The language, the words can be different. But as someone who has uh, is is really committed to a scientific perspective, yeah. I want to be able to say, here's precisely what you mean by that. Now, we, you have to say it and say, okay, well, what do you mean by agency? Well, we mean certain things. And then there's, there's a, a, a relationship between motivation and, and, and what I call agentic engagement is the technical term. Um, but agency, I use it as an encompassing term to say, oh, there's certain types of motivation that, that are part of that. And there's mm -hmm. certain needs that need to be supported in order to produce the motivation that then leads to that type of engagement. And so being precise about that is, I think, something that's really important um, is, is there's all kinds of language around how people are doing things in a particular environment. Yeah, deeper learning is one of these buzzwords that, yeah. that well, we're probably on the tail end of it. But, but I, I like it. I, I, yes, um, because what we can say is 
when the motivations are more external and the engagement is merely behavioral, that's shallow learning. Yeah. And we can describe deeper learning in very more precise terms. Say, oh, a when you have agentic engagement, that's inherently going to be deeper because the motivations are more internal. The needs have been satisfied to some degree. And that means that you're firing at all cylinders. You're not distracted by pursuing needs. Right. Um, and, and so there's and, and there's follow ons in terms of well-being. And and there's a whole large conversation around that. Um, but but that's that's what I'm excited about is. Let's take the, the, the experience that you have. You have a lifetime, literally, of experience of like things worked in a certain way. And you've been globally successful yeah. at sharing that. And so let's be in that conversation and say, well, does it, I mean, yeah, agency. And then and, and there's this whole science of self-generation theory that's saying right. some cool stuff. Um, but then, then does that translate like where in the process should we be sharing that? Um, should it be leading with it? Should it be coming on the back end and educating your parents? And, and when do students need to learn that stuff and understand for themselves that meta conversation? Oh, that's what I was learning. Or right. that's what I was, you know, and, and, and taking even just the concept of teaching and learning to take it beyond content delivered to, oh, what are the bigger conversations? What does it mean to nurture someone as a learner? What does it mean to, to what are the social implications of that? Is there a way? We, so, so, so that's kind of the, another level at which to take it. And, and it's interesting that you're, that you're pursuing that uh, on some level. <laughs> yeah, we are trying. Yeah. Hopefully on every level. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's my plan. <laughs> so, so tell me now about, uh, so, so describe for me who shows up for Clon Lara, like the community that you're serving. Who do you see there? Well, that's a really interesting question because we are in Ann Arbor, Michigan, home of the University of Michigan, an enormous public university. Um, but I would say that that. Um, I'm going to start with the students and the students get there through their parents. OK. And right, it is right. unusual that the parents are um, are affiliated with the university in an academic sense. Those yeah. people in my, you know, this is not a scientific study. This is just the experience. Um, those people uh, tend to really highly trust the public school system, which in Ann Arbor is, of mm -hmm. course, absolutely amazing best public schools in, in the nation. <laughs> i'm sure never mind that they're just completely <laughs> average public schools in on, in a broken system but i try to zip my mouth about that um right. <laughs> so we tend to get we tend to get um scientists and families who have a parent that is a scientist an engineer mm. um and and i don't know why that is uh pfizer was a, a big player here mm. pfizer pharmaceuticals and they're yeah. not here anymore but we had a lot of pfizer uh families and um we kind of get lawyers doctors professionals but not the university type and so that's always been mm. really interesting to me is is why do these people who are so educated not see the flaws in the educational system and want mm. something different for their kids? Um, so uh, we also get a lot of real free thinkers, um, mm -hmm. you know, that, that and 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 a lot of free thinkers uh, uh, like to live kind of as far off the grid as they can get, which in these days right. is not very far. Um, but, but, you know, they, they don't necessarily choose to wear shoes, you know, <laughs> you know, that sort of <laughs> just to prove, yeah, yeah. you know, they're, they're free thinkers and they can do what they want, which is great. I, you know, I don't have any shoes on right now. So I, I'm not, there's not judgment calling. Um, but a lot, you know, we run a private school in, in a very expensive town. And so, um, mm -hmm. right. we tend to have people in this day and age who can pay the tuition or most of the tuition. Right. Um, so yep. that limits us. If, if we had some great big um, endowment that, that could help us mm -hmm. pay students tuition, we'd see a lot more of the real free thinkers, barter system um, type right, folks. Right. The kids are all fabulous. They're all, you know, joyful. Right. What we're trying to do is protect their joy. 
Uh, and so mm -hmm. we like to get mm -hmm. the kids, you know, when they're little and keep the joy as they grow through our program. Um, yep. We get kids who come in middle school or kids that come in high school. And if they've come from um, the public school system or a traditional school system, and the reason they're looking at us, for, you know, is because they now understand that they need something totally different. We uh, go through that process of de-schooling or, you know, decompression right. where, you know, unfortunately things got so bad for them and they don't necessarily have that joy left or that spark for learning and, and, and we're trying to put that back in. Um, mm -hmm. But joy, the word joy is actually in our, you know, sort of, you know, foundational documents right now to say mm, that that's what nice. we're trying to protect and that's what we want. Um, the, the staff that comes to us, the people that come to work for us, uh, tend to be joyful and pick up on the joy that we are trying to, uh, mm. you know, to create. Uh, we've worked really, really hard over the last 15 years to create a culture of joy and say that that is nice. really important to us. And what are the components of that? What are we asking you mm -hmm. to bring? What are we promising you that will help you protect that? Um, and so we're really protecting the staff because they do burn out more quickly. And, you know, yeah. it's it's not as easy. I'm sure you've dealt with this uh, in all of the schools that you have talked to um, when you're allowing, you know, when you're not just using the same curriculum and the same schedule every day and the same textbooks, you're making decisions, you're making choices and you're and you're picking up, oh, you know, we really did miss the Krebs cycle, and it really is important. If you're going to go on to college in biology, then you need to understand the Krebs system. So how am I going to put that back in since yesterday we decided to go on a field trip since the weather was so beautiful? Um, you know, uh, so staff can burn out. Teachers can burn out a little faster. Right. So we're, we're trying to really protect the joy by how much, uh, you know, sort of downtime we can schedule them and still afford to pay them and you know um they're uh the people who tend to come to us as staff um most of them have worked in the traditional education system and we are offering them what they were looking to do when they first went into that system mm, um, right, before right. it became about tests and uh, you know standardized achievement and um, competition what most people mm -hmm. go into teaching for is because they really like the idea of being with students children however old they are right. learners and and watching that process watching those aha moments creating environments where an aha moment is is a, a possibility um and 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 so there is joy in that uh there's all ages in that you know, we, we get staff that are young and fresh and, and we have people who spend a lot of time and they think, I got to get the heck out of this. And, and yeah, yeah. can I be around your kids and in, and in your environment? Um, so part of what I'm hoping Clonlara can pass on also is, is not just education to students, but creating culture in school that is really right, healthy. Right, right. Because I think we've done a good job of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's that's one of the things I try to you know check in about is the staff and and how challenging that is, um, uh, because yeah, th there's not a the only teacher preparation program in the world that I'm aware of that even you know focuses on what we call democratic schools is in Israel, uh, because Yaakov Hecht yes. got connected with the Kibbutzim School of Education. Um, and so, so it's unique in the world, as far as I know. Um, mm -hmm. Now, I've, I've, because I've been outreaching to promote my book um, to various um, colleges and universities, I am just seeing that there's that there's some that have sort of a tinge, you know, like they, they kind of have a hint. Um, they might, you know. It, it's it's extremely rare to see any reference to democratic schools or anything like that. Right. Um, um, unless the school itself, a unit like, uh, are, is itself identified kind of as alternative in some right. way. Right. Um, so it's extremely, extremely rare, which is why I kind of try to promote my book into that world. Um, is, it, you know, uh, for decades, uh, A.S. Neal's book, Summerhill, was the thing that that exposed people and now yeah. it's no longer it's i think it's been a, probably a decade or two since it's been a required reading um and so it's really interesting to to 
you know, have that, uh, to, to, to figure out how to make that, you know, how, how, how do you bring people in right. um, effectively? And, and I think it sounds like, like you have an easier time bringing in someone who has that sort of traditional background and saying it's not always easy i want you to know don it's not always Mm, easy there you go (laughs) (laughs) we've certainly had people that we that didn't work it 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 never it never flew wilbur um yeah uh, yeah. i know that that um there was a little bit if you i don't know if you know jerry mintz of arrow right right. um but you know I, i know there was a little bit of a sort of industry if you want to call it that um line that said if they've been in the regular system over four years and they'll never work for you and I was like well I'm kind of <laughs> stuck you know if that's all I've got applying then I have to be the yeah. one that says how can I make this work um, yeah. that doesn't yeah. mean you know all, all of my efforts aren't necessarily successful but we are in the process at, of, at Clan Lara we've created our own teacher training program um, how do oh, we, cool. you know, how, because it really was overlooked. And, and I know when my mom handed the reins of Clonara school over to me and I said, you know, sort of, where's the training book, you know, cause I need to hire mm-hmm. a new staff member and how do I know if, you know, how, what do I tell them to do? And not that I came from a big training background, but here now it was my responsibility. And my right, mom, right. <laughs> you know, and my mom said, well, you know, honey, sometimes they get it and sometimes they don't. And, and sometimes it could be a little magic. You get the right person. And if you don't, you know, there's the door. And I thought, yeah, I, you know, I had her big desk and I'm looking all over for the magic dust. You know, did you leave any? Because <laughs> I don't know that I have time to handle everything and, you know, guess at whether this person is going to be the best person for the job. And one of the things, yeah, yeah. um, a, a skill in my strength system is is communication and articulation and I kind of thought if you can't explain to somebody what they should what you expect them to do or what they should do or what they shouldn't do or you know um, you don't have a problem with that person you have a communication problem and so how Mm. do we articulate that and what does it mean and so now we started with here's some required reading my mother did wrote a book the school inside you and so that is required reading for somebody who comes to Clonmara. Um, some other uh, books that we require are, um, I should have written the list, I, you know, I should have the list right <laughs> down, but, but we have some required, you know, and so we put these things in, in, you know, just started marking down. What do I want these people to do? What do I want them to pay attention to? What do I want them, you know, mm. um, what experiences am I looking for with a kid? I, I want to see somebody who kneels down to talk to a kindergartner instead of right. stands over them and looks down at them to tell them, you know, to direct them around. Um, and so if they don't, if they seem like a great person, but they didn't do that when they came to meet the kindergartners who may have had a say in their hiring. So hopefully, right. you know, that, that's not the only, you know, the input isn't just my guessing. It's a kid's intuition. Right. I like this, this teacher. Uh, but if they didn't do it then, we're going to cover that. So I had this expectation that you would do that. If, if you didn't, that doesn't mean um, maybe you're not good at it. It just means maybe we didn't give you the right opportunity. So I'm going to tell you, mm. I'd like to see you get on the kid's level more. I'd like to see mm. you back off when they're having a conflict and, you know, and, let, right. and see if they solve it themselves, um, that right. sort of thing. And you can't, you know, you can't put all of those experiences into, you know, even even a, a drawn out interview session. So um, we started putting them down and we have this, you know, training manual now and that we are considering um, branching out with that training manual and and um, teaching it to other democratic schools, other schools, right, right. if we can, you know, if we can figure out how yeah, yeah. how the, env- the difference of environment um mm-hmm, would allow mm-hmm. so th- that's something we've been working on for years very cool very cool yeah yeah glad to hear that <laughs> i know it's so now i you know it it's all born of you know necessity <laughs> yeah <laughs> i never well, did find that magic dust <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> exactly it's like oh man yeah so that and, and that's exactly why this first season is really focused on the established players is people who've been in it for a while is yeah is I, I realize that th- 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 there's no way that I know what's going on 
Right. Um, even if you consider it to be a cohesive, you know, it's you know, a, a community. Um, it's a community that is why you know spread out. It is diverse. Yeah. It is, you know, uh, and so uh, I've realized that that you know I need to tune in and one way to do that is just have these great conversations yeah. and learn oh look you're doing that cool thing you know <laughs> yes i know um, so so i i'm actually uh, i think we will go ahead and and wrap it up here uh for today great. um so thank you so much you're welcome uh, thank you, you for know, inviting me this I'm, is wonderful i'm just so so thrilled to to know that clan lara is you know, has survived and is <laughs> growing and 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 ready for a new campus in Portugal. That is fabulous. Yeah. Um, and and that your you know your programs are, are are thriving. So so thank you very much. Oh, so if people want to uh, get in touch and find out more, how, where do they go? What do they do? Uh, info at clonlara org and clonlara is C L O N L A R A. Info at clonlara org. Um, org. Maybe you don't need the W's anymore. <laughs> I'm showing my age. Um, tons of, of information online and tons of like inter you know interactive um, sessions, uh, celebrations oh, yeah. of learning, that sort of thing available. So just check check out the website. And 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 there's opportunities both uh, the you know the Ann Arbor yes original campus as well as homeschooling support and other kinds of resources. And we have, as you said, we are global. We have students in I don't even know how many countries anymore, but but at least 31 different different countries, different regions. Wow. Um, we have some um, partner schools, uh, one in Japan, oh, yeah. one in Portugal. Uh, we used to have one in Costa Rica. So people know us out there. Uh, sometimes more than they know us in the United States. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Thank you so much. 